So you started TRT and you felt amazing. You felt like a new man. Energy levels are up. Mood is improving. Everything seems to be clicking along. But then weeks, months down the road, bam, suddenly you're anxious. You're having heart palpitations. You can't sleep. Energy's going down. Everything seems to be getting worse. What happened to the magic TRT? My name's Dr. Taranella, and I help people optimize and improve their health. And this TRT honeymoon turning sour is a common scenario and common puzzle that I'm helping my patients figure out. It's often a sign that your dose, while initially was okay or even perfect, has become too much for your system. So today we'll walk you through six critical steps to help you figure out if your testosterone is too high and why these signs and symptoms often get overlooked and help you understand the real source of these confusing symptoms and problems. So the absolute key to cracking this code of too much testosterone, step one is identifying and connecting your symptoms to the timeline. That switch from TRT feeling awesome to suddenly feeling wired and anxious and having heart palpitations and you can't sleep well usually isn't just a random occurrence. It typically happens somewhere around one month to possibly as long as six months, but usually around the three month mark is when this is going to start to manifest. And why is that? Well, your body initially is going to benefit as you correct the deficiency, but over time, your tissues become more and more saturated with that testosterone. And so that same dose that was precisely perfect initially and you felt so much better becomes suddenly an overload. This delayed onset to your new symptoms and your new state is why it's so confusing to connect the dots. You felt so good over here, and now you're on the same dose here, but you're not feeling good, so it can't be TRT, right? The answer is definitively wrong. That's not the case. And this timeline that I'm explaining is the first big clue that this is actually the problem for you. So understanding your body's signs and signals on TRT is obviously very important, if not vital, when you're on testosterone replacement therapy. And my ebook, TRT Mastery, really helps you customize and optimize this therapy so that you're getting the benefits without any of the unwanted side effects and also helps you identify what those side effects might be if you're having them and helps you navigate this world a little bit better in conjunction with your doctor. So you can find that in the link in the description below. All right, so now that you understand a little bit on the timeline, let's walk you through the next steps to understanding if your TRT is too high. So the second thing we want to understand in a little more nuance is the symptoms of too much testosterone. So this is where many guys get misdiagnosed and the most common overlooked sign of too much testosterone or too high of T, especially with that delayed onset, is from adrenergic overstimulation. So what does that exactly mean? So we have two types of systems in our body that work on our central nervous system. We have fight or flight, which is adrenergic, and rest and digest. Adrenergic is sympathetic. This side is parasympathetic. So when we rev this one up, some people initially, a lot of people are going to feel a little bit better because they're tired and fatigued and run down. As you're revving that system up, depending on how your system is wired and how much receptors and different things, how your body's breaking down the adrenergic signals can suddenly start to tip. And this is your fight or flight system that the testosterone helps support. So what is this going to feel like? Well, you're going to have new or worsening anxiety, constant edginess or feeling of inner restlessness, or possibly even a sense of doom or panic. You might have heart palpitations or racing heart. You might have this even when you should be calm and there's nothing really going on. You may even wake up in the middle of the night with this sense of panic or palpitations. You commonly will have sleep disturbance. You can't really sleep that well, so you're wired, but you're also kind of tired because you're not resting well. And that could happen from just frequently waking throughout the night as well. And so your energy levels, while initially may have felt great, now they're kind of going down or just not feeling better than when you started the testosterone. And that's because the excess energy from the adrenergic stimulation is affecting your sleep. So that's where the wired and tired kind of scenario comes in from too much testosterone. So how does this actually work? What is the specific mechanism involved here? So testosterone, again, 
can influence the adrenergic receptors in your body. So this is a docking site for certain kinds of neurotransmitters. You can think like norepinephrine and dopamine are the classic here. And testosterone doesn't directly spike cortisol levels long-term when you're in a normal or optimal level. It'll often lower the cortisol if you're just correcting a deficiency. But when you're on adrenergic overload, that's going to create chronic stress, kind of like a physiological response, similar to if you're in an actual fight or flight scenario where you're arguing with someone, where you're worried about something for the next day, it's just going to increase those levels. The threshold from going from baseline even keel to anxious and worried about something is much thinner. So it's easier for you to get tipped into that anxiety state from even minor things. And so that activates your body's alarm systems. And studies do show that super physiological androgen levels can impact these anxiety pathways. And I think that's what's important to recognize is what's super physiologic for one person is not going to be super physiologic for the next person. And this has to do with how you're wired. Were you already prone to having anxiety, sleep disturbance, and things like this? Maybe you didn't think of yourself that way, but if this is going on and your levels of testosterone are not that high, but this is how you're responding, it's probably time to take a second look at that. And that's kind of why it often gets missed too. These symptoms, part of it is the timeline, part of it is, you know, the dose you're on isn't really not that high and you get labeled as anxious, stressed, or insomniac. Then you get handed a beta blocker, anxiety meds, or even worse, if you're complaining of fatigue now because you're not sleeping, sometimes you'll even get a higher dose of testosterone, thinking that that's going to help your energy. And then you're caught in a really vicious cycle. So the first step is kind of mapping out the timeline. Second step is the symptoms. And the third step is connecting what's going on with the actual lab values. A lot of times when people are on testosterone replacement therapy, I've seen this numerous times, but it doesn't happen in all cases. But a lot of times you're being monitored in your trough levels. So this is your lowest point right before your next dose. And this is useful to ensure you're not super low or too deficient. But if you're having these overstimulation effects, your trough level might look fine. It might look perfect or maybe even it looks low on paper, but it doesn't reflect what is going on at the peak. And that oftentimes is where those symptoms are going to be coming from is that peak level. And so that's why your symptoms, especially those symptoms of the adrenergic overdrive, often become a more sensitive indicator of too much testosterone. And so connecting your injection to when those symptoms come on can also be really helpful in pinpointing where we're at with your testosterone and when those symptoms come on. But that's also when we want to be checking is more at the peak and not the trough levels. The other thing is it's not always just from the testosterone itself. There are other downstream metabolites or downstream effects of higher testosterone levels. And some of us are more susceptible to these downstream effects than just the testosterone itself. So when your testosterone is running high for long periods of time, or again, some people are just more susceptible to this, excess testosterone is going to convert into estradiol via an aromatization process. And this creates a secondary wave of symptoms, usually going to be things like water retention, puffiness, sometimes nipple sensitivity or actual breast growth as well, or swelling, increased emotional lability, ups and downs, and libido issues too. And so this is where making sure we're getting the estradiol checked, make sure we're using the most accurate estradiol testing, and also checking the estradiol at that peak is going to come into play here to give us clues, give us more actionable data on, as to what the problem is. But typically when the testosterone levels are really high, the E2 is also going to be high. But some people, even when they have normal testosterone, they have a really high E2 as well. So it's important to distinguish those things and make sure you're doing an accurate E2 test to get the best out of that test. The other thing that I kind of alluded to already in a couple different scenarios, but we'll just dive into it a little bit more here, is your unique genetics and your unique sensitivity. And I think this is where a lot of people get into trouble because they compare their dose to other people's dose. And this is huge. There's no one size fits all testosterone level for everyone. A dose that makes one person feel like superhuman and that, you know, that dose makes them feel great all the time and they've been on that dose for years can make another person feel really wired, anxious, and can't sleep and their life is a wreck. Well, why is that? Well, part of it can be age, part of it can be your overall health, and part of it can be your unique genetic and also environmental susceptibility, meaning how you're wired. 
So part of the genetic side of that is just how efficient your body clears these adrenergic substances like dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine. There are variations in our body's detoxification systems. One of those is called COMT. That is an enzyme that helps us eliminate estrogen. It also helps us eliminate dopamine. So this means if you have a genetic alteration in that COMT enzyme, your funnel, instead of being open like this, is going to be more closed like this. That means as you stack more things in the hopper, it starts to get overflowed and things spill out and start to stimulate your tissues. So that would be things like estrogen. Well, testosterone increases estrogen. So yes, that's going to build that funnel up. And if you already have this narrow funnel, you don't need a lot of things to start to overflow that funnel. Other things that go through there, again, are like dopamine and epinephrine and norepinephrine. So that's just one piece of the puzzle you can, going back to the funnel. So as the funnel gets full, more of those are going to spill out and have a harder time clearing. So they're going to circulate throughout the body. What are they going to do when they get in different tissues? Well, they're going to dock and bind to the receptor. Some of us have more receptor density than others. So you need less of those adrenergic stimulants to activate that docking site. The more activation of those docking sites, the more stimulation of those tissues, the more revved up your system is going to be. And so these two things account for a lot of the variability that we see in the dosing range where one person feels great over here on the higher end of the TRT dosing and the TRT lab results you're at, for simplicity, on the total testosterone, you're at 1,000. And this person over here feels great at 500 or 600. It's these genetic variabilities, age, overall health, and different things like that. Okay, so what are we going to do? Does this timeline seem like it fits to you? Do these symptoms seem like they fit to you? Are you having this delayed onset of adrenergic overdrive? If this seems like it's fitting for you, the answer or solution isn't adding more medications to chase your symptoms, strategically and carefully considering a testosterone dose reduction in conjunction with your doctor. The goal is really to find that sweet spot where enough testosterone is giving you some of the benefits of TRT without getting the overloaded symptoms and more problems. But how do you actually do that safely? When do you retest after your dose change? And critically, when can you expect those overload symptoms to actually go away or improve? Well, recognizing these signs and symptoms of too much testosterone is obviously step one. And to get a deeper dive into this and truly mastering your TRT, you might want to check out that TRT Mastery ebook. Don't forget that link is in the description. So the key thing that I want you to take away from this video is if your TRT felt great and then turned into this problem with anxiety, heart palpitation, shortness of breath, and bad sleep, among other things, around one month or three months into it, possibly six months into it, that's often something called delayed adrenergic overstimulation. And it's from a dose that's now just simply too high for your system. And it's frequently overlooked, in my experience, treating people with testosterone replacement therapy for many years now. So recognizing the problem is crucial. Knowing how to fix it is next. That's exactly what we're going to talk about in the next video, your optimal tiered T dose, the dose that is best for you. You can find that video when it's ready right here.